In this episode, we drag the entire family to six of San Miguel's top restaurants based on local recommendations and online reviews. We'll try the most popular dinner dishes, cocktails and desserts, and then pick our favorites based on flavor, authenticity, service and atmosphere. So come along for the ultimate San Miguel fine dining tour. Do you know where we're going? Yes. Are we lost? No, not yet. Maybe. Not yet. <laughs> but getting lost is half the fun. We are foodies, big, big foodies. We don't just like to eat food, we like to eat amazing food. Incredible food. So we're always searching out the best places to eat food. Yes, whether it's street food or gourmet dining, we don't care, we just want it to taste amazing and we want it to be an experience. We want our meals to be memories and experiences. And here we are in the town center for uh, San Miguel de Allende. And you can kind of see here, we're like right under a church. Spin around with me. And it's just beautiful downtown area, but there are so many amazing restaurants down here. And we're gonna check yeah. out how many, six? Six, we're gonna go to six restaurants. And we're gonna find out which one is the best. All of these are supposed to be amazing hot spots. Highly recommended by our Inspirado guide. And if you're on TripAdvisor or anything like that, these are like the top rated, trendy, hip, cool, just amazing vibes, amazing atmospheres, and of course, incredible food. So we're starting off with Fatima 7. It's a rooftop restaurant, so it's gonna be amazing views, no doubt. By the way, I think that's uh, Fatima 7. Sure. All right, let's go, I'm hungry. Me too. It's Mediterranean food, so it's gonna be good. Here we are, right across the street, the Hotel Casablanca. That's where the Get restaurant is. The so we made it to Fatima. We didn't get that lost. I already knew what I was going to order before we got here, and I'm so excited to read it on the menu. I am getting the tuna tartare with serrano pesto, avocado, green apple, and cilantro. But the big question now is what cocktail is Phil going to order for us? Got a rooftop bar menu right here. Specialty cocktails. I already know what we're getting. When in Mexico, for my lady friend, I'm going to get the San Mike, which is a Mezcal Amores Reposado with pineapple juice, fresh, looks like, serrano, lime, and something called Arabe Natural. I don't know what that is, but it sounds really good. It's exactly what you like. You got your mezcal with the smokiness, you got pineapple juice, fresh, and you got the serrano for the spiciness. That sounds good, right? You know me so well, that is perfect. And then for me, the Leo Bino, which is Ancho Reyes, Don Julio 70, and grapefruit juice. Just so that I can make sure this one doesn't try to steal it from me, because she doesn't like grapefruit. Gracias. Mm. Cheers. Oh my god, that is so good. Is that good? Oh my gosh, it is that good. Pineapple foamy on top and smooth and that smokiness from the mezcal. Yep. I love that smokiness. Perfect drink. Mmm. Fresh squeezed grapefruit juice. Fantastic. No smokiness on this one because it's tequila. It's almost effervescent, but it just totally tastes fresh and light. I love it. Can I try yours? Oh yeah, here you go. You want to try mine? Nope. Oh, you know, that's over the top. This is amazing. It's going to blow your mind. Wait until you see what's under here. Really? By the way, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> oh, it's bread. <laughs> <laughs> With olive top and on. <gasps> Yum. That was so good. All the flavors and that serrano sauce is super thick, super serrano-y. Is that green apple? It's green apple. And of course, flowers. What meal isn't complete without a purple flower to eat? I'm a poet. This is great looking hummus. What are these called? Falafels. That's legit. Let's try it. Mmm. I think that might be red, red pepper hummus. Oh, really? It's really good with quinoa. The falafel, mm, it's really good. All right, I gotta try it. Okay, I have to be honest. I think that the hummus and the falafel is better than the tartare. It, it tastes so good. These of all the 
the flavor from the lime. The lime makes the flavor show up so much more. My favorite here was definitely this cocktail. I had three of them. And food-wise, the hummus was my favorite. That hummus was incredible, and the falafel. Loved it. Everything was good, but the standout for me would be the cocktail and the hummus. And of course, the views. We are going to Quince, which is a very trendy place, as far as I understand. And when we were in Punta de Mita, we met a bartender who said, we absolutely must try Quince. That's where we're going right now. And it's very hard to walk on this bumpy street <laughs> while filming. <laughs> I know. Okay. I'm holding on to Phil with two hands. <laughs> Great dinner last night. Looking forward to a second one. And then we'll see how these all pan out. Okay, so for tonight's cocktails, I'll bring them up to you. This one is your margarita. So this one's Don Julio Blanco. It's got cucumber, it's got lime, and it's got pineapple. And I don't know what kind of a rim it is, but... It's purple. Does it taste purple? It tastes like purple salt. And for me, this little thing. This is a mezcal cocktail, and it has pineapple, cucumber juice, rosemary syrup, activated charcoal, what? and lime. What? Activated charcoal? Yeah, I think it cleans your teeth while you're drinking it. <laughs> so it's actually good for you. Oh my God, that's so good. Is it? Oh my gosh, you better give that to me now. Love that smell. Oh my gosh. What? That is so good. What? What is this charcoal thing? It's so subtle, but it's so good. It's a good looking house salad. That looks Hey, Colt, Brooklyn, that's your dinner, so you guys share it, okay? Oh, yeah. That looks awesome, guys. Ooh, it looks so good. I can't wait to try it. So this is a, a lamb barbacoa dumpling. Mmm, every bit as good as you said it oh, was. Oh, mm, Gracias. And this is the yellowtail sashimi in the jalapeno. All right, I'm gonna do the yellowtail first with jalapeno. This yellowtail sashimi, yum. This Peruvian style. Really good. Right. Let's compare and contrast with the tuna. Mm. Which one do you like better? That's so hard, actually, because they're both really good, really fresh. That's good quality fish. All right, quince roll. This is basically, I think, like a rainbow roll because it's got all the fishes, but this one also has shrimp in there. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh, Brooklyn, how's your cheese plate? Delicious. I like it. It's really good. Get some radish, get some beef. I'll skip the tomato. I uh, just had some habaneros, so I'll come back to those. Isn't that good? Yeah, it's like carpaccio in a yeah. really cool like tomatillo, jalapeno yeah. kind of sauce or broth. It's really good. Mm. All right, babe, now that you've tried everything, what's your favorite? Lamb dumplings. The lamb dumplings. That's the favorite, my favorite thing that I've had so far. How about you? Honestly, I think it's the roll, the quince roll. I don't know, for some reason, maybe I'm just in the mood for sushi tonight or something, but that's really good. That's really hitting the spot. But otherwise, I'd say maybe the yellowtail sashimi.
Key lime. Key lime tart. Good. Good. All right, I got the white chocolate and blueberry tart. That totally lived up to its height. I loved it, it was amazing. But there's so much we couldn't show you at the time because it got really dark, right? What, I'm so sorry. No, my feet are just getting really wet from the kids playing in the fountain behind us. But yeah, that, yeah, that food was fantastic. <laughs> and what a surprise to have the tightrope walker, right? Yes, there was a tight, tight, not tightrope, what is it? Tightrope. Cocktail. Too many. <laughs> All right, so that one's definitely yeah. at the top of the list so far, but yes. we have four to go. All right, we just finished up a very intense and, sh I don't know, calorie burning day out oh, on the ranch. For sure. Doing like Lord knows how many miles on those horses. And then we just got cleaned up. It felt so good to shower. Mm -hmm. And we're heading to dinner, so. Yeah, our third restaurant here. Seems it's, like it's more than that, but I, does I trust like it's you. It does feel like more. Because um, the tacos one doesn't count. We went to like five different restaurants, but um, that was a separate thing. What's the place we're going tonight? Casa Notra. Tell us about it. Um, I believe it is an international cuisine and every time we mention that we're going to Casa Notra to people around town, they go, oh, it's amazing, you're gonna love it. So I expect nothing less, except no expectations, get them out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, well, let's see. That was quite the walk. This is not a distortion from the widescreen lens. This is actually what the glass looks like. It is. This is cucumber and mint, a welcome drink. So we're switching it up a bit tonight and we're having wine with dinner. It is a red, is it from Mexico, the wine? Yes. Yes, a red Mexican wine, which is great because we're in a couple days going to a winery, Phil and I. So we're excited to see the Mexican vineyards they have here. out with this wine for a while. Cheers. Reagan got the Caesar salad and they are making her Caesar dressing in a hollowed out cheese wheel. Parmigiano Reggiano cheese wheel. And apparently they are simultaneously preparing my pasta which was a tagliatelle with uh, Parmesan Reggiano right out of the wheel and they're gonna flame it. They're gonna flame it, I think, with a vodka and make a vodka sauce out of it. I'm excited. about this bite. I've got some ham, some mushroom, and you know there's a lot of cheese in it. This pasta is hitting the spot. Oh my gosh, it is like crazy parmesan -y. So parmesan -y. Oh, it's so good. It's like a Parmesan sauce. What? Okay. You want to open it? Lift it up carefully yeah. by the top. All right, three, okay. two, one. Wow. Oh my he knows what to do with it. He does. <laughs> it's not the same as the other, the last one, but it's good. Really good, I bet, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, what we have here is squidding pasta. I never say no to a squidding pasta. So this one's mm. squidding pepperadelli pa with shrimp. <laughs> so this will be fantastic. Mm. All right, a little bit of squidding pasta, a little bit of shrimp. Got some fresh Parmesan on there. Mm. So much seafood taste as soon as you try it. Like, I can't believe that it's only shrimp, because you don't usually get seafood taste from shrimp. And obviously we've got the squidding pasta, 
but that's not even what hit me first. It was definitely from the meat, the protein. Super saucy, just like yours. It's just got this nice tomato base to it. All that Parmesan, all the parsley, and it's just, it's really good. I love it. Marshmallows, bananas, and strawberries covered in chocolate. I don't know what we're gonna do. So Phil, a couple days ago, told me to stop taking my purse out because he's got credit cards and the money and we I don't need the ID here. And so um, he forgot his wallet. Because, and we need to ask for the check. Yeah, it's still in the bag from all of our uh, horse riding today. It's, it's in like the hidden saddle. away, <laughs> so he didn't bring it. So we gotta figure out how we're gonna pay for dinner tonight. I'm sure we'll figure out something. I mean, Brooklyn can wash dishes. Or we'll just go to a Mexican prison. Like anything. <laughs> Everything's on the table. We'll see. Uh, we can pay. <laughs> it's just gonna be a little complex. Okay, thank you. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Okay, let's. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of dishes. Brooklyn? <laughs> All right. You can sleep most of the day tomorrow. You're just gonna have to be here tonight for a while. <laughs> so, Brooklyn, you don't have to wash dishes. You're lucky. You're really putting the pressure on, aren't you? Baby? I'm sorry, but this is... <laughs> My husband tried to pay with PayPal. Here we go. Send money. That should be way bigger. <laughs> what a wonderful family. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Honestly, it's a pleasure having you. We barely made out of there. Okay, remember how we left our wallet at home? And so we couldn't pay for dinner. We ended up PayPaling dinner, which is fine. But we were like one block from our house, and we realized that, that <laughs> since we didn't have our wallet, we also didn't have a key to our house. <laughs> so we can't get into our house. But we're luckily, like our amazing local Inspirado host, Jorge, said, no problemo, I'm within five minutes, I'll be there to let you in shortly. So he's gonna let us in. But it, while we're waiting, let's just talk about that restaurant because Marco was fantastic. He was the, owner, the owner of the restaurant. Yeah. And it, I mean, he's just amazing. He spent, I think, probably the majority of our meal there standing at our table talking to us, yeah? I think so too, yeah. <laughs> it was wonderful, we loved it. It was everything that people said it would be, but more because I did not realize that we would have this table side service. I'm making your pasta here. I'm making your Caesar salad here. It was awesome. The food was incredible, but the and service was- And they let us leave. Sorry. Let us leave without paying. No, well, we did pay, pay but I, he would have. He was like, "No, it's fine. Pay me tomorrow." Yeah, he's like, yes, <laughs> no, but... we're gonna find a way to pay you. Yeah, just super cool. So much. <laughs> the place oozes culture, and the food it just oozes flavor. It was fantastic. So, I mean, easily right at the top of the list. We'll see how the next couple of nights go, but love that place. So definitely check it out. No, no matter what. We're off to restaurant number four, La Parada. Peruvian restaurant. Known for their seafood and amazing cocktail menu, which are two things we love. So we're starving and we're thirsty. Can't wait to get over there. <laughs> All right, off we go. For our first cocktail tonight, we're doing a Peruvian favorite, which is the Pisco Sour. Similar to some cocktails we've made on Hump Day Happy Hour, but this one's made with Pisco. Pisco is the liqueur, or the liquor, I should say, and then it has lime juice and egg white, and the egg white makes it look like a wine glass full of foam, as you can see, but it's gonna be delicious. This is traditional. They also have numerous flavors, like chili and pineapple and all these others, but we wanted to go traditional at least for the first one. So here we go. Ooh, it's kind of like a lime creamsicle kind of thing. I mean, you get a lot of that foam in there, and then the lime just really hits you. I don't know what Pisco tastes like, honestly, and you certainly don't get the flavor from this. I'm assuming it's in there, but it's probably kind of like some of the uh, guavo stuff we've done before, where it's just kind of like vodka and it's somewhat flavorless. I don't know, but we're gonna experiment tonight. All right, let's see what this wine glass full of foam is all about. It's literally full of foam, and it's so much foam. I don't get any drink yet, it's all bubbles. Mm. Okay. That was really yummy. Yeah, Phil's right, it tastes like a lime creamsicle. Wow, it's so frothy. How 
fun. We are having ceviche patria, and this was recommended to us by Alma, our tapas and tequila tour guide. She said it is an absolute must, so we got it. It is white fish, onion, sweet potato, corn, and tiger's milk. milk. It's really good. It's um, it's just like ceviche, but it's really big chunks of white fish. It's cooked perfectly, but um, really limey. Just like the, it goes really well with the pico sour. Check this out. Uh, this is arroz afrodisiaco, and this is like ancho chili, and it's got a tomato and jasmine rice, and then all sorts of seafood on here: scallops, octopus, shrimp. It's in a white wine sauce, and it looks absolutely delicious. Oh, there's a shrimp, more shrimp, some uh, squid there. Let's try this. It looks kind of like a paella. It's delicious like a paella. It's exactly like a paella. All the seafood, I mean, maybe saffron's not in there, and that's kind of the key ingredient on a paella, I think, but that's delicious. Mm. Mm. Yes, finally, my entree is here, and this is Taku Taku Power, and it is shrimp with all kinds of spices and veggies, and it's in a uh, chili cream sauce. So it's it almost looks like a... Um, like a soup, like a shrimp soup or tortilla soup or something like that. I can't wait to try it. Mm. It is like a shrimp soup, but just a lot thicker with the cream. Really, really yummy. And the shrimp is so awesome and tender. Lemon tart, but it is like a coconut almond crust on the bottom. Looks amazing. All right, kids, dig in. Ooh, it's like a biscotti. Try that, baby. So we just left La Parada. La and Parada. I can't pronounce anything correctly. That's not true. That meal was fantastic in my mind. What did you think? I thought it was amazing. But I have to say about like the whole city here is that all of the food is really cheap compared to the amazing cuisine that you get. But it is. It was awesome. And it was really authentic Peruvian food. That was really good <laughs> Peruvian food. It was a really good meal in general. And it, for me, it's at the top of the list. Yes. And what I was going to say is that San Miguel also, is a culinary hub. It and, is. and the uh, owner of um, Casa Notre that we went to last night was saying that it just took a few chefs that came in here that turned it all around. And it's the past maybe eight years that it's become this major foodie hotspot. So for me, this is at the top of the list, meaning not necessarily Ooh, number one, but it's at uh -huh. the top of the list. Yeah. It was really good. Uh -huh. I really enjoyed that meal. I really enjoyed the cocktails. Mm -hmm. That was a fantastic meal. We're gonna have to wait to see what the number one restaurant is when we're done at the end of this trip. So we still have two more to go. We are headed to our fifth restaurant, which means that our trip here is almost coming to an end. One more restaurant after this, though it makes the, this one the penultimate. Love that word, penultimate. I know, it's my favorite word. Also, the name of this restaurant is Atrio. Atrio. And it is another rooftop patio like a lot of them here. But this one, people say, even amongst restaurants that have amazing rooftop patios, this one is killer in terms of the views that it has of all the steeples around here. So we'll see. Uh, they're known for? Sushi and smoked meats. We're going to see what it's all about. Okay, look at here. Phil has ordered us another charcoal cocktail. I'm very excited about this. And a cucumber lime margarita? Well, neither one's technically a margarita. They are uh, mezcal. Ooh, again, I love mezcal. All right, give it a try. Mmm, that's so good. You can't go wrong. That's excellent. That's very good. There's something, um... Let me try it. Something I'm not a fan of in that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, honey. I certainly don't think it's bad. I'm enjoying it, obviously. But we're switching it up. I just ordered a couple of gin and vodka martini. So a little bit of a spin on like a Vesper. Um, something a little more traditional, but it seems like they have a really good cocktail program here. So I think they're gonna make a decent martini. Mm. Ooh, really smell the gin. Not ice cold, but delicious. Thank you. 
This is foie gras nigiri. I have never seen that on the menu before. It has like a pear with it too. It was really tasty, the pear, but that's all I taste, honestly. Ooh. That's a whole fish. Crispy red snapper. I think so. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. mm. A nice, spicy, like, sweet chili sauce. Mm. Try this bite. Mm. Tell me that's not amazing. Mmm. What's got, baby? I got tuna tataki, and it looks awesome. This is perfect. Here we go. This is awesome. This legit. sauce, this dig sauce it. is legit. I dig this sauce. Super tangy, super unique. Yum. All right, another great meal here, but obviously we've got to head back. I'm a little sad that tomorrow night is gonna be our last night. And then after that, we can tell you our favorite. And I know for sure that when we're done with these six restaurants, we can tell you the best in San Miguel de Ande. All right, this is the sixth and final culinary experience while we're here, and it's called The Restaurant. Can't get any more fitting than that. <laughs> it's international cuisine, you can't get any more global than that. So we don't know a whole lot about this one, but it's our last night here, so we hope it's good, because we want to go out on a great night. All right, first things first, cocktail menu. Really good variety of stuff, this is gonna be a fun evening. This is the best surprise. Phil got me a pear martini with a prosecco. Flow. And elderflower. A prosecco and elderflower. Pear martini. Pear martini. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's really good. I love it. I love it. I love it. You're welcome. That's really good. That's perfect. He knows me so well. And I got myself a little margarita sandia. Watermelon margarita. It's good because it's real watermelon juice. For tonight, I ordered the it's um, a curry dusted scallops and shrimp. Phil, so, what'd you get? I got the chilled avocado soup, <gasps> and I got the shaved Brussels sprout salad because she highly recommended it. I was gonna get the shrimp cake, but she's like, no, you gotta get the salad. Yeah, so. and I'm excited that he got the chilled avocado soup because that looked really good to me too. Ooh, chilled avocado soup. Burrata. Mm -hmm. Caesar salad. Gracias. Mm -hmm. Brussels sprout salad. Thank you. Ooh, and your curry dusted scallops with so shrimp. So and good. by the way, it was, uh, what are those little bean things called? Lentils. Lentils. Cool, let's see your cheese tray, bro. It's cauliflower puree. Oh. I'm so excited about this because it smells so good. I'm gonna dig into the scallop first, and this is cauliflower puree. That's Couldn't right. Couldn't think of it earlier. Cauliflower puree and mm. lentils. Mmm. That's really good. I love the um, description of it, of curried dusted. is perfect description because it's just like the slightest hint of curry. But, Chilled avocado mm. salad with shrimp pico de gallo. Let's give this a try. Mm. Mm. That's so good. Mmm, that is really good. That is like a mm. avocado gazpacho. Mm. Yeah, let's try this breathtaking, ground shaking. Ooh, I can't wait to try that too. Brussels sprout salad. That was good. Give me a little bite of that. Okay, so we're really full because that was a very good meal. And now we're gonna move on to postpare dessert. And I think we're gonna do a lemon tart, which has like lavender and like lavender whipped cream and stuff. And I think we're gonna do a chocolate tart. How much dessert will you have, babe? Zero. Why? Por qué? I'm full. I, get, I love getting full on the savory. I am not a, a sweet craving person. Yeah. It's so weird. I could swear you guys were full, but as soon as these desserts came, it's like, whoa. Here, get, get a bite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's talk favorites. Oh, there are so many. These restaurants are incredible, and it's so true that this is a culinary hub, a foodie hotspot. But we have to pick a favorite. So out of Fatima, Quince, Casa Nostra, La Parada, uh, Atrio, and the restaurant, my favorite is... 
Quince. Quince was amazing for me and my very close second La Parada and Casa Nostra, but Quince had amazing food. The rooftop was gorgeous, so it was amazing scenery. The cocktails were incredible. That was our charcoal co sure. cocktail. Yeah. So delicious. Uh, and then on top of it was the tightrope walker. <laughs> Entertainment. <laughs> Over the top. Over the top, it so was to amazing. It lived up to its hype in every way. So that's my favorite. Number one for me, Quince. So I think Quince is definitely an experience because it has the atmosphere, it definitely has the food, mm -hmm. but if you want something a bit more, I don't know, authentic or just casual, you know, for me, I think number one is gonna be La Parada. I was thinking you were gonna say that, yeah. I, had, I, I don't even know if I've ever had Peruvian food before. I certainly don't think that I've ever had a, what's it called, the drink? Pisco sour. Pisco sour mm -hmm. before and it, that cocktail was pretty magical. So I suspect that even amongst Pisco Sours, that's a very good Pisco Sour. So frothy, but yeah. The, the atmosphere was fantastic, you know, it was very nicely decorated, but at the same time, it just felt chill. You know, it was, it was a smaller environment and mm -hmm. you could just kind of hang out and really enjoy authentic Peruvian food. So for me, I think that comes out at the top. But yeah, if you're entertaining, you know, if you're here with a couple of families or a number of couples and you really just want a lot more energetic atmosphere, mm -hmm. quince for sure. Yes, and I'd have to say Casa Nostra, delicious food, but that gets number one for service. Absolutely. I mean, the owner of the restaurant was at our table probably more than 50% of the time, which wasn't annoying because the guy's hilarious. <laughs> uh, had such a good time. The food is fantastic there also. Definitely more of kind of, a, I don't know, I wouldn't call the, uh, the atmosphere mm -hmm. laid back or, or more chill necessarily. It was just it was like you're at your family table. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and was... if you forget your wallet, um, he won't make you do dishes. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely an honorable mention for uh, Casa Nostra. Yeah, for delicious. sure. Delicious. So if you find yourself in San Miguel de Ande, so many great restaurants to choose from. We do hope that you try some of the ones that we experienced because they were incredible. Um, you're not going to be let down here as a foodie. And we had a lot of other experiences here too, and we we're gonna have episodes for each one of them, so make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of those. Exactly. Tacos and tequila tour, and horseback riding all day on a authentic Mexican cowboy ranch. And a tour of this incredible villa. That's right. Okay. We're the Lockwoods, a family of five with five careers, three schools, and infinite passion for adventure. So we redesigned our business and studies around a lifestyle of freedom and world travel. Join us on our journey.